Hi, I'm Alessim, and this is the walkthrough video for Knob Studio. If you're not familiar with Knob Studio, it is a max overlay device that lets you work with automations by blending functions together and then reading them back. There's a lot you can do with this device, so in this video we are going to cover every detail of it, so keep watching. The device is divided in three main areas. The first one is the waveform area, where you can actually see the waveform you are working with. The second one is the function props area, where you can actually sculpt your waveform. And the third one is going to be the reading heads area, where you can actually choose how you want to read your waveform. Let's start with the function props area. You can work with up to four different functions. To activate one, you just need to click on this toggle. By default, the sine wave is active, but you can choose from classic LFO shapes along with other kind of functions that we are going to look at shortly. With the range, you can select the area covered by this function. Let's start with the classic LFO shapes. You can choose the number of cycles along with the phase and the amplitude. Plus, you can select how it's going to move over time fixed if you want it to stay still, reading mode if you want it to move along with the rhythm of your project, or in free mode if you like to use LFOs in free mode. With a random function you can also reseed it if you want to. The ramp function lets you create a ramp choosing the start value, the end value and the curvature value. Air mode is kind of a sample and hold where its value change every time its section is read. In knob mode, we can choose the value for the whole section. That's useful if you want a fixed value or if you want to map this parameter to an external control. Now let's see what happens when you activate more than one function. When two functions overlap, they blend together. The blending goes on even when the waveforms are moving. Now let's see how to randomize this entire process. By pressing the random button, you randomly activate two to four functions and also you randomize their parameters. In the random tab, you choose how the randomization behaves. In the distribution tab, you can choose how the ranges are going to be distributed. In overlay mode, they're going to be equidistant and overlap. In space mode, they're going to be equidistant, but don't overlap. In free mode, they'll be randomly distributed, but always overlapping. Below, in the function section, we can choose which function we want to be able to activate. If you want to be able to have the LFO shapes, you can also select if and how they're going to move over time. Also, we can choose if we want RAMs or air function to randomly appear. Besides that, if you choose to have the LFO shapes, you can choose the ranges for the amplitude and the movement in time if it's not fixed. Also, you can choose if you want to randomize the faces. If you're feeling brave enough, you can map this random button by mapping this random area. That's useful if you want to work with generative racks or things like that. Now let's see how to read our waveform. There's three ways to read the waveform. LFO mode, manual mode and envelope follower. In LFO mode, you can move the reading heads by following the movement of an internal LFO. You can choose between the type of the LFO along with all the other classic LFO controls as well as a smooth value and a jitter value. One thing I particularly love to do is to choose the random shape for the LFO and have an higher smooth value. That's gonna give an unpredictable reading. In general, even with a linear LFO, the movement of the waveform creates repetition but internal variations. As I was saying, there are too many possibilities and it's kind of impossible to describe them all. In manual mode, you can manually choose the position of the reading heads, or you can map it to an external control. In envelope follower mode, you can capture the audio from another live channel 
and use its envelope to control the position of the reading head. Finally, in the Map tab, you can map the value read by the reading heads. Here you can choose a spread value that is going to space out the reading heads. The spread can be equidistant or random. Moreover, you can apply a smooth and adjusted value, unique for every value of each reading head. And that's it! If you're curious about how Nob Studio is actually made, check out the other video on my channel where I explain how I actually build this device. I hope you are fun with Nob Studio. If you find any bug or have any suggestion for the device, feel free to leave a comment or send me an email. Take care, bye!